there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a, a card kind of in mass using um, just a few supplies and it just looks so fun and wonderful and uh, well, you know, gosh, it sounds like I'm bragging. I don't mean to brag, but I just think this is a really kind of fun, cool card to make. Okay, well, let's just get on to it. This is like my uh, fifth take because I was so froggy when I was trying to do this this morning, I had to redo it. Um, so yeah, I did this this morning and now it's afternoon and we're going to make a card. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use watercolors, which is really great if you're a um, beginning stamper and you don't have a lot of um, ink pads, you know, if you have a little kit of watercolors, you can use any watercolors. This will be great. We're going to use, um, we're going to need white cardstock. We're going to need some um, scrapbook paper. I took a 12 by 12 paper and cut it into quarters, so I was able to line three envelopes. Okay, and then I took that last quarter and I cut it into um, two inch wide strips to embellish our card with. So just a little bit of um, frugality there. Here's our card base. Now the other thing you're going to do is you're going to take um, four inch by five and a quarter inch pieces of white cardstock and emboss them. And then you're all you're before you emboss them, they'll cut out a frame, cut out this like uh, some sort of shape with whatever shape cutter you have, and then um, keep that flat but emboss the frame. And we're going to use both of these parts in our card. So there. Oh, and then um, we're also just going to cut some little labels out from some of that scrap white cardstock. I think you'll need like three sheets of white cardstock, one sheet of 12 by 12 paper, and your watercolors, and some stamps, and you'll be in business. We're going to use this stamp set. This is one I picked up at the stamp show from Local King. I had my eye on it for a couple of years, and I finally uh, broke down and got it. And uh, I have not folded my card yet, because I want it to lay nice and flat while I'm stamping. So, what you want to do, if you've never used a set of stamps before, and you're going to use it for the first time with this technique, then make sure you wash them. And I actually even scuffed my stamps up a little bit with an emery board before I began, just to make sure my watercolor would stick, because it will tend to bead up. Um, I recommend you use a regular brush and not a water brush for this, because water brushes tend to put a little too much water on your um, rubber stamp. And um, I'm going to use um, my Koi, my new Koi watercolors, because they're fun, and I just got them yesterday, and I was excited to use use them. I'm taking a little of this peach color, which is kind of a strange watercolor. I've, uh, I've never had um, a peach color in, my, in a set before, so I thought I'd try that. And then um, some of this kind of rose pink. It's a little too watery. You uh, don't want it pooling around too much or it's going to give you kind of a sloppy stamping. And we're going to grab some greens, kind of like an olivey mossy color here and add that to the green parts in your design. It's a, it takes a little practice to get used to how much um, how much water you need to have. You don't want too much, but if you don't have enough then it's not gonna, the paint's not gonna come off of your uh, stamp. So it's just kind of, uh, you might want to test this out a couple times on just a scrap of paper before you commit to your nice cardstock. Alright, this is kind of like a fun um, surprise techniques. You're never quite sure what you're going to get. Each time will be a little bit different. All right. And uh, that looks like it's still pretty moist. Now, you might want to take your frame and just kind of hold it along the front of your card just to kind of get an idea of where you need to be stamping. And I'm going to put this kind of right in the middle here. And there we get that pretty watercolor effect. Now, if you've missed any spots, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. If you've missed any spots, what you can do is um, just clean your brush off, and you can maybe just pull a little bit of the paint, pull a little bit of the paint around. But if you need to, you can grab a little bit more and just kind of add it in there. I wouldn't get too fussy with it because you don't want to take away the uh, the spontaneity of this technique. You can throw a little bit of that those green grasses in there if you if you feel like you need to, but you know don't get too fussy with it. A little bit's fine, but just try not to overdo it. This is, you know, supposed to look fun and easy breezy. All right, so now the bird here, this little chick. I think the set is called um, Chicks. That's what it's called. Uh, I'm going to use a little yellow ochre. Oh, there we go. In frame. How lovely. Uh, I keep wanting to hold it over my paint so I don't drip it on my card, I think. A little bit of this uh, burnt sienna color. a little bit of black, which is kind of neat because I never use black when I'm watercoloring, or I should say, never say never, say hardly ever. Um, so I can kind of use some of that here and get a cool look. All right, and now I'm going to put that bird right up on that little grass. 
There! I think that looks pretty good. I don't think I really need to do much else to that. So for the uh, little panel that's going to go on the inside, I'm going to do a little stamping on that. So let me set this aside to dry. And actually, I think I'll put a little scrap of paper down underneath where I'm working so that um, I don't get paint all over my workspace. And um, I'm going to take another one of the stamps from the set. Now, you don't have to have this set. You can use whatever set you like. Um, I find those stamp sets that have multiple images are really, um, are really good for this because everything's already coordinating, so you might as well just, you know, use all the stamps that come in the kit. I know, um, like, about Art Accents, if you buy a, the stamps by the plate, the stamps all coordinate. Um, same with, like, Stampin' Up! and... Um, different sets like this. This does not work so well with the clear stamps. It works much better with the um, with the rubber stamps because it wants to, especially the, the cheap clear ones from the craft store, your, your paint's going to want to beat up on them. It's not going to transfer quite as well. You can of course try it if that's what you have. Go, go for it. Give it a whirl. But, um, oh, I like that. You can give it a couple stamps there before you have to re-ink. But, you know, try with what you have, but I will tell you that rubber is going to work a little bit better for you. And if your, your paint isn't sticking, then use um, use a little emery board or an eraser and just kind of rub over the surface to give it a little more tooth, and you'll be in business. I like this rose. I'm really enjoying these koi watercolors. Like I mentioned yesterday, I, um, I wanted to try them out because I like to be able to recommend uh, inexpensive products to people. And I'm going to be starting a new watercolor class, so I just want to see if they're any good. Because I didn't want to recommend them if they weren't. So I'm going to take a look. I got this also leaf stamp here that was in the kit. That, that might be a little juicy, so I'm not going to put too much paint on there. Let's give that a try here. Oh, that, that looks pretty good. And maybe I'll do a couple around the top. I'm going to leave some room for some, uh, some greetings. Don't want to cover it up too much. So you can stamp it a few times before you have to re-ink. And do one or two more right over here. Alright, so there's our little panel that's going to go inside our card. I'm going to set that aside to dry. And then we're going to make a little, um, a little label to go in the front of our card for our sentiments. So what I'm going to do again is go in with my little leaf stamp here and use a little of that yellow ochre. See, there's nothing fancy. I'm just tapping on the paint. I'm just kind of blotting it off, too. If I feel like I've got too much water on my brush, I'd blot it, then I'd get my color. Just give a little bit of that on there. If it looks really dry, if it's not glossy, then you can give it a light mist of water, too. So let's just stamp that right there on the bottom. And then I am going to use my ink pad and a clear stamp from another set. Um, this is a paper tray ink stamp. I think it was one of their promotional year freebies I wanted on a contest. So stamp that right above the leaf. There. And then we've got our little title for our card. And um, now we can start to put things together. So let's find our card right over here. And I'm going to move this paper out of the way. I'm going to zoom out a little bit too. Whoops, sorry about that. And I am going to fold this up and using some 3D foam squares, I'm going to put that right on top there. These are foam squares. It's kind of funny. These were leftovers from a um, puzzle kit that my kids had. It was one of the, making all those 3D um, pictures and they had all these foam squares left over when they were done. They, they give you more than you ever could use. and. Um, I said, oh, don't throw those away. I will keep those. And actually, they work better than any of the crafting ones I've uh, I've bought. The craft ones tend to fall apart, or they tend the adhesive tends to stop getting sticky. Not, I'm sure not all brands, but the ones I've had the misfortune to use have done that. Put this over here, and then peel off our little release papers on the back. Yellow squares all over the place. That's the only thing I don't like about that. I could use hot glue if you didn't want so much dimension. We'll be using some hot glue, don't worry. Rarely a card is made where the hot glue gun doesn't come into play sometime. So when I cut this mat, notice I left a wider margin on the bottom. That just adds a little visual weight and looks a little more pleasant. I'll put that right on there. 
Now, another tip that I'll offer that I'm not going to use in this card, but um, when you're when you're stamping a sentiment, if um, like that's a kind of a long skinny sentiment, and I didn't have any label stamps, so if I didn't want to stamp that leaf on there and I just wanted a long, I just wanted a small um, die cut sentiment, what I could, what you could do is cut those in half and then just use that. You know, I could do that. But I felt like I want to cover up a little more area because I have all this space here, so I'm going to use it like that. And I'm going to put a um, another one of those foam squares up at the top here so that it will kind of support it. And then I'll use a little hot glue at the bottom to um, to anchor it to the embossed paper. Because embossed paper doesn't really want to stick very well um, uh, because of the, the raised texture. It's hard to get the two pieces you were trying to stick together to marry. So I just got a little bit of hot glue there on the back. You could use whatever glue you prefer, but... I prefer hot glue. And that's the front. Now, if you want, you could do a little inking on some of the raised areas just to bring it out a little bit more. I kind of wanted to keep it kind of um, a little simpler and more elegant, so I decided not to do the inking there, but that's completely up to you. So on the inside, I'm going to take one of those strips of um, paper that you cut. This is a little wonky bit on it. I'm just going to trim that off. Uh, and you can put that wherever you think it looks nice, and you can add your panel here. I think I like that down on the bottom and the panel up there. On the other one, I um, decided I would stamp a little bit in the background and put the panel on top. It's completely up to you. And if you're only making two cards, maybe you want to, maybe you'd want to line the whole entire part in there because you'd have a little extra left over. So, you know, absolutely adapt it to what you like best. Let's put a little adhesive there. Uh, this paper is by, it's one of the, from the, one of those big packs from Can Company um, that I really, I really like. So... Yep, I'll put a little bit of adhesive on that. Hopefully it's dry enough for me to put the adhesive on. We'll do it over here just in case it isn't. I won't get any wet paint on my card. But I just think it's so much fun to stamp with watercolors. It gives you that, um, it gives you that loose painterly look and you don't even have to paint. You don't even have to know how to paint, but you can still get that kind of fun look as long as you're not too fussy about how it turns out. So my tip for lining the envelopes, I have a whole video on how to line your own envelopes um, and I cut it out by scissors on the on the uh, video, but I realized I could just do it so quick on the paper trimmer and that's what I did right here. So there you have it a um, quick and easy card for any occasion. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. And until next time, happy crafting.